Hello friends, today I would like to talk about something very important to the Adventist Church, the Trinity. You know, Trinity is really a big topic that sometimes causes disagreements among the church members. And I think Trinity is one of the most misunderstood concept in the Christian faith. And many ask, how can there be three persons in one God? Now, let me share with you a video from Nabil Qureshi. Nabil Qureshi is a former Muslim, and he defines and explains the Trinity in such a way that is easy for us to understand. Now, let's watch his video. Here is the definition of the Trinity. If you write anything down tonight, write this down. God is one in being and three in person. One in being and three in person. Now, that is not a contradiction. See, if, you, if I said he's one in being and three in being, that's a contradiction. And I'm arguing with myself. If I say he's one in person and three in person, that's a contradiction. God is one in being and three in person. So the next obvious question is, Nabil, what's the difference between a being and a person? Glad you asked. Thank you. <laughs> the being, a being, is that quality that makes you what you are or makes a thing what it is. So being is whatness. And a person is that which makes you who you are. So for example, I am a human being. That's what I am, in case you were confused. I'm a human being. Who I am is not a human being. Who I am is Nabil Qureshi. What I am is a human being. Who I am is Nabil Qureshi. What I am is, is heart, lungs, it's muscles, it's eyes, it's, it's all this, tendons, bones, etc. That's what I am, but that's not who I am. Who I am is a kind, loving, caring, compassionate person, <laughs> as my wife would tell you immediately. <laughs> who I am is very different from what I am. Humans happen to be one being and one person. That's what humans are, one being, one person. God is different. God is one being, Yahweh is what we call God. But he's three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. Those three persons are equal because they're all God. They've all existed from the beginning, like John chapter 1 says, because they're all God. So then the question comes up, well, how can Jesus say something like the Father is greater than I if they're all God? And the answer is actually quite simple. Let's say I pointed to the President of the United States. Let's say I said Obama. I can very accurately say Obama is greater than I am. Because when he goes somewhere, he rolls with the posse. <laughs> he's, got, he's the most powerful man in the world. People, there's news conferences when he sneezes. I mean, he's greater than I am. But is he any more human than I am? No, he's not. He's greater than me in terms of role, but he's not greater than me in terms of essence. In the same way, the Father is greater than the Son in terms of role. The Father is superior. The Son is subjected to the Father in terms of role. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 15. It says that Jesus is going to subject himself to the authority of the Father so the Father can be all in all. It's because the Father is superior in terms of role. But is he any more God than Jesus is? No, because they're both God. There's only one God. And they're equal in essence, Father, Son, and Spirit. Nabil Qureshi says God is one being in three persons. The Father, the Son, is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. He says that even though human is one being and one person, God is so different. God is one being, Yahweh, but three persons, Father, Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And they are all equally God. Now let's watch another video where Randy Skid shares his thoughts about Trinity. 
listen closely and think about what he is saying. Okay. Is the Holy Spirit a separate being? Mm -hmm. Is he the Spirit of the Father or Spirit of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Some argue that the Trinity is a Catholic teaching mm -hmm. and that the founders of the Seventh Adventist Church did not believe in the Trinity. Let me listen to me carefully. When we hear the word heathen and pagan and Catholic, we start to panic. Are you with me? Now, do pagans eat breakfast? Yes. Do we eat breakfast? Yes. Is that pagan behavior? Are you following me? Is that, do, do pagans wear clothes? Do we wear clothes? Is that pagan behavior? No. Now, the Catholics believe in the Trinity. It doesn't make it wrong because they believe in the Trinity. They believe that Christ is fully God. That's not a Catholic doctrine. That's a biblical doctrine. Not everything Catholics believe is wrong. But where they're wrong, they are catastrophically wrong. Are you following me? No, you're not listening to me. So they believe some things that are biblical. And if you believe the Bible, you believe the same thing. The doctrine of the Trinity is biblical, not Catholic. Now let's go to Matthew 3. All right, read with me. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now let's look at it microscopically. And I ask God to continue to be with this session. Please, in the name of Jesus. Where was Jesus? In the water. He was coming out. In what direction was the dove traveling? He was up. So we have two different beings. Where does the dove sit? On the shoulder, stem on the shoulder of Jesus. The voice we hear, where does it come from? We're above. So we have someone coming down. Now, the spirit can take any form. Remember in Acts 2, there were cloven tongues like as a fire. That's divine power, you see. We don't understand that. The spirit came down sat on Christ who was coming out of the water. And a voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We have Father, we have Son, we have Holy Ghost. Go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28, reading from verse 18, read with me. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go on. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. Name represents character, power, and authority. Because Romans 8, 9 tells us, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. We must be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, let's go to John 3, verse 8. Read with me. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now, what do you understand by born of the Spirit? What's that? Born again. The new birth, conversion, or justification by faith. Only God can do that. And Jesus says, the Spirit is the force that carries out, that carries it out. Only God can deliver you from sin. Let's go to Acts 13. All right. Verse 1, Acts 13, what does that say? Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and as? Uh-huh. Nightman? Mm-hmm. Lucius? And Saul, who had been brought up with Manaean. <laughs> okay. When you get home, read it again, and it'll be much better. Okay, now, verse 2 says what? As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, come on, the Holy Ghost said, stop. Speech is one of the highest expressions of intelligence. That's why animals don't speak, although they're intelligent. The Holy Ghost said, what did he say? Keep reading. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have. Mm -hmm. Now, look at verse 1 again. How many people were there? Read the names again. Barnabas, Barnabas Simeon, Simeon, 
Lucius, Manan, and Saul. Now, five. The Holy Ghost said, I want how many? Two. He deliberately selected the two he wanted. That's the power of discrimination. To the work we're unto, finish verse 2, I have called them. Can electricity make a call to you to go preach for Christ? Can energy do that? The Holy Spirit is an individual, intelligent being. We don't understand him. By the way, for those of us who are tempted to think the Holy Ghost is less than anybody else, let me issue a biblical warning for you. Go to Matthew 12. Are you there? What does that say? Where? Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven the men. But the blasphemy against the shall not be forgiven. Read verse 32. And whoso speaketh a word against the son of, it shall be. But whoso speaketh a word against the, it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world come on neither in the world be careful what you say about the Holy Spirit you talk about Jesus that forgiveness is possible you run your tongue and your mouth against the Holy Spirit and that's Jesus speaking be very careful how you talk about the Spirit of God now, we read in John 3, 8, the Spirit saves. He, he's the one who carries out the new birth. Go to Isaiah 45. Are you there? Yes. Read for me. What does it say? Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth. Come on. For I am and there is. What does that mean by I am God, there is none else? Yes, okay. What else? Read the whole verse. Look unto me and be saved stop that's the activity be look and be saved now he says for I am God there's none else what does he mean by that I am the only one who can save you but we read in John 3 8 the new birth is brought about by the Spirit and Jesus himself said that then the Spirit must be fully God because only God can save you you know Randy Skeet gives a straightforward answer to the questions about Trinity some of you may not accept the doctrine of Trinity. Our early church fathers did not accept the doctrine of Trinity also. But remember, truth is progressive. You know, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, it says, And we have the prophetic word, that means the Bible, more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamb shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. You know the phrase until the morning star rises in your heart suggests a journey towards deeper understanding of truth. It means to say that truth is progressive unfolding gradually as believers study the Bible and grow in their faith. As we continue to seek God and study His Word, we experience a fuller understanding of the divine truth. So here is my question. Could it be possible that our church pioneers while laying the foundation of our faith, did not fully grasp the entirety of truth during their time, as they too journey towards a deeper understanding, please uh, feel free to share your thoughts or comments on this video. And I hope this video has made it easier for you to understand the doctrine of the Trinity. May God bless you as you continually search the truth. Amen.